Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. This week's teaching focuses on polycystic ovarian syndrome, looking at a study which is very much fundamental to how we understand polycystic ovarian syndrome. Understanding the two compartments of that ovary, the follicle count and the ovarian volume, the theca element, are inherently so important for understanding how severe the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome can be. Understanding this very concept allows us to plan better treatment modalities around either creating an ovulatory cycle or doing assisted conception on these women. This was a study which was published in Fertility Research and Practice in 2017. And what it looked at reviewing is, is follicle nu number more important and associated with insulin resistance or is it ovarian morphology? Often what we do is, we have started doing an ultrasound scan focusing on follicle numbers. We say more than 25 follicles in the newer criteria of 3D ultrasound and it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. Our focus is slowly goes on to follicles. And those of you who come for my teaching will see and that I will draw, it, draw a column where I'll show you that it is volume and the theca element that also pay, play a very important part in improving our understanding and focusing on better treatments in polycystic ovarian syndrome. Let's go to some of the basics which this paper looked at. The incidence of PCOS may vary between 12 and 21 percent. It is well known that women with PCOS have a higher insulin resistance. And this is where the complication starts. We also know that insulin increases theca androgen production. And the theca cells in women with PCOS appears to be more responsive to the actions of insulin than controls. So you have theca cells becoming more active. They start secreting more and more androgens as they being, start being stimulated. It also acts as a co-gonadotrophin in, in modulating steroidogenesis. Now women who have ovaries that look PCOS but do not have any symptoms are classified as PCOM, PCO morphology. And in no, women who do not have these, there doesn't seem to be an associated association with increased metabolic disease. And what theoretically we know is that is that theca element that seems to generate androgens, it seems to cause more irregularity of periods, it is seen by an LH dominance that occurs and the inability of follicular cells to break that dominance, leading to failure of stimulation. So what did this study look at? This study looked at ovarian volume and or follicular count. Uh, which one of these is independently associated with abnormal metabolic findings in women with PCOS. This was a prospective cross-sectional study done in California between 2006 and 2014. No contraceptive pill for at least a month. Insulin resistance were measured by the HOMA. Age and BMI were noted. They looked at outcome variables, which were fasting insulin, HOMA, fasting glucose of more than 100 mg per deciliter, 2-hour glucose of more than 150 mg, free testosterone and SHBG. They looked at exposure variables and that was ovarian volume of more than 10 cc, follicular numbers, follicular number less than 12 or more than 12, follicular number less than 25 and more than 25. I've just put a chart of all the variables that they documented in this study. Now we look at these the discussion it becomes more interesting now if you had the woman had PCOS and ovarian volume was more than 10 cc 
she was two times more likely to exhibit markers of insulin resistance compared to women's ovaries that were less than 10 cc. A large number of patients seemed to reach the criteria of more than 12 follicles, but they were not associated with metabolic parameters. The new standard and a follicle number cutoff of 25 did not display any more metabolic abnormalities. It's not just this study, but few other studies have also shown a link between insulin resistance and ovarian volume. What explanation can we give? Insulin resistance is a major driver for metabolic phenotype, and we don't, we certainly know that. We have one of the studies which we did in India with Dr. Sachin Kulkarni uh, in Kolhapur also looked at ovarian volume and looking at insulin resistance in women polycystic ovaries. While the Western data looks at obese women and insulin resistance being pushed by obesity, the Indian study also looked at lean PCOS with insulin resistance, which also focuses on a slightly different a phenotype. When you start seeing high levels of insulin, it seems that this induces mitotic changes in theca cells and it seems to literally expand the theca cell component of an, and this increases androgen production. Insulin also lowers sex hormone binding globulin and that itself leads to more free androgen and shows signs of clinical hyperandrogenism. This in fact makes things worse, peripheral insulin resistance starts increasing and in effect you start seeing a bigger ovary. Again with PCOS, what did that study show us? The study in India also showed us that as obesity increases, AMH also increases. It's not that they become more fertile. But also as obesity increases, insulin increases, and that has an impact on all the peripheral symptoms of PCOS. So in conclusion, ovarian volume but not follicle numbers appears to predict metabolic abnormalities. Next time you scan someone, you know, those of whom who ag agree to my way of pictorial description of drawing PC ovaries, of drawing the theca element, of tabulating the theca element, what we make easy to patients becomes easy to us. If we can explain to patients in relative easy terms, we will also understand this complex disease much more easily. The next time you decide that you are going to scan somebody with PCOS, measure the follicle numbers, but measure the volume. Go back and draw on your notes how big the ovary is and what is the relation between the theca cell component and the follicle cell component. And it will start helping you to understand how stimulations may succeed or fail how modifying the dose of your medications, prolonging the dose of your clomiphene, letrozole, or combining it with gonadotrophins may help you to achieve a better stimulation. On the other hand, you'll also understand that some PCOS will not stimulate with a dose of 150, and you need to stimulate them higher. How and why? That's the challenge that PCOS gives. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this talk on PCOS. We'll plan to meet again next week. Please do share this video. Thank you very much.